everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Music Television. Got a great guest list coming up. For all you metalheads out there, your minds are about to be blown. He's a founding member of one of the bands that can actually be considered one of the godfathers of thrash. They just completed their 12th studio album. Just came out the other day. And I got news for you folks. If you don't listen to it, you're damned if you don't. Yes. Yes. Everybody, Metal Churches, Kurt Vanderhoof. Kurt, I finally got it right. <laughs> there you go. You know, you, you probably felt like you were you back in. Good. You felt like you were back in the production studio again, yeah. That's right. Yes. It's like take the, one. The visual version. Yeah, take one. Uh, yeah. Take two. Take three. You know, I should have someone with the clacker. You know, doing this right, right now. Yeah. yeah. Do but, over. Yes, but anyway, Kurt. So literally, just a few days ago. Metal Church releases its 12th studio album, Damned If You Do. That's right, on Friday. Yeah. Yes, Super yes. Yep. Great stuff. And uh, so this is the second album since Mike Howe rejoined the band. Right. And it's the first album that Stet Helen from Wasp uh, had an opportunity to be on, yeah? Yep. Absolutely, yeah, you're right. Yep. Man, so uh, I got to ask you, and, and I want to touch on, you know, bringing back Mike and bringing Stet on, because I think uh, the audience is going to love the stories behind that. Uh, obviously, at this point, you know, Mike would be the longest tenured frontman for Metal Church. Right, right. How much arm twisting did it take for you to get him to come back to the band? It wasn't a lot of arm twisting more than explanation of how we do business now. Mike had been out of the business for 20 plus years since you know metal church kind of broke up back in the early 90s right and a lot of that was due to how the business was run and management and all that kind of stuff so he that's why he got out of the business and uh and i can totally understand because i had kind of removed myself to a point too sure um but what happened was is that we were in contact and at the same time about a week prior to ronnie monroe leaving and I had just been in contact with him just kind of as friends and because we hadn't really chatted or been in touch in a while. Okay. And then Ronnie left and then uh, it was like, well, hey, how would you feel about doing this? Because I did not feel that there was a fourth singer for Metal Church. I didn't think that there was going to be – having a fourth singer just seemed kind of like, you know, that would really be trying to, you know, beat a dead horse, so to speak. Right. And I was like, yeah, I just don't – I mean – maybe keep the band going with a fourth singer, but not call it metal church, call it something else. Oh, wow. You know? So, you know, that was my thought process. But then I was talking with Mike and we started talking about it. And then we got it to the point where, Hey, let's write some songs, see if it's good. See if we still had the magic that we did when we were doing blessing and human factor and stuff like that. And that worked out great. And in the process of that, explain to him how the business works and how we do business. We're independent. We make the records. I make the records, you know, in my studio. And we are in complete control of how we do it. This is how the new business works now. It's all independent. It's all so we control it for the right. most part. I mean, other than when we turn it over to Rat Pack, who was, was fantastic. Okay, I was just going to ask you about that, yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're great, but it, but it's still, it, we work with them. You know, they, they work with us, we work with them. It's a, a phone call away. It isn't calling like it used to be calling the office, leaving a message, and hopefully somebody that's in control of your career will call you back in a week, you know. And so those old school things kind of went out the door, and we at that point we managed our at that point we managed ourselves and so it was just kind of all the things that kind of made him get out of the industry was had had changed okay. so the next the next concern was okay let's write some songs and long as it's good i'm not going to do it if it's going to suck and we liked it the songs came out great and 11 was a proof of that so right prior to that working was that was when he came back so it wasn't a lot of arm twisting it was more of kind of showing him how we do business now and avoid all the problems that we had before right on so. and i tell you and, and his voice sounds great so i guess that time off i don't know what he was doing in his well, time yeah. off but, but i want to come back to that too because i thought it was kind of funny well that's one of the one of the best things about it is not only to get your singer back but have him be singing pretty much better than he ever has you know Honestly, yeah, I mean, he sounded amazing. So, again, everybody, we are here with Kurt Vanderhoof, Metal Church, and we're just talking about, you know, Mike Howe rejoining the band. 
and, and another guy that I want to talk about uh, that just came on with Damned If You Do, uh, Stet Howland. So I know that he was touring at the time that you had released Eleven because, you know, Jeff Plate has his thing going on with, uh, you know, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Right. So um, what, I guess, led to Stet going from being that tour drummer to being your guy that's now featured on Damned If You Do? Well, when Jeff left, it was, you know, completely amicable and we, you know, we're still great friends and all that kind of stuff. It was just kind of, well, Steve, when Metal Church took a break <clears throat> right before Generation Nothing, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, uh, when we took a break, Steve had started uh, working with uh, a band called Where Angels Suffer, which were former members of Lost. And, Stet, and him and Stet became good friends. And when we picked things, when Jeff left, it was just kind of, Steve suggested, well, what about Stet? And that just seemed like, well, yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Perfect. Perfect. And then we jammed with him, talked to him. Then we didn't, he didn't really need to audition because we knew he could play. Right. But we, uh, we talked with him and he's a good guy and he's a lot of fun and he's full of energy. And so we jammed and it was like, well, yeah, this is <laughs> this thing. You know, this is, this is perfect. And it was easy. So yeah, it was great. And he brought a different feel to the band and he brought out new energy and, you know, so yeah, it was just, it just made perfect sense and it was a real easy transition. Well, I'll tell you what, and it's funny how you talked about that sound that Stet kind of brings to the table there, uh, because, and this is not at all, you know, to slight everything that my metal church had done early on, but everybody, I'm telling you right now, I wasn't kidding in the intro. You're damned if you don't, if you don't go check this album out, because damned if you do, Kurt, honestly, wow. I mean, I felt like I was really teleported back to the glory days of metal. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that was the intent. That was the intent. You know, a lot of that is uh, is because I'm so tired of every metal album from a production standpoint. It all sounds the same. Right. It's just everybody has the same guitar sound. Everybody has the same drum triggers. All the drum tracks are completely beat detected and digitized and everything's perfect, which to me is like, well, then use a freaking drum machine then. <laughs> right. You know, it's just like, it, it's just like, because the, the whole idea was to, have a real drummer play because then they have a feel and different drummers have a different feel and a different push and a pull and, and a little thing like that. So, so my approach to this record, and I still use analog tape because you can't really cheat that much, but it just has a sound to it. I wanted this record to sound because I knew we were going to put it out on vinyl. I wanted it to sound exactly like what you said, it, it, the way, you know, the guitars aren't so fat that there's no room for bass guitar, right. you know, there's the drums and everything are just so compressed and the, the mastering and the mix is so loud that everything is just in your face. There's no dynamic range and all these kinds of things that I miss and why I only pretty much listen to vinyl anymore anyway is because it's musical. Right. And so the, from the production standpoint, that was really important. And I, and I appreciate it when uh, folks like yourself pick up on that We're up completely on your own. And that, that's, that's the whole idea. Well, to have it sound like an old album that we grew up with in the eighties, you know. Right, right. But I mean, it, in a way, like you said, I mean, yes, it sounds old. It's like a throwback to the eighties, but at the same time, it still does have such a very new, powerful sound to it. Which I, I, honest to God, I wish there were more. You know, an infusion of youth, you know, coming in and really supporting that genre of metal. Right. I don't right. know that there's that many young bands out there doing it. Yeah, I don't know either. There probably is somewhere, but it's there's so much out there to find, you know? Right. You know, like, I've, I've, I've said this in, in an interview before. It's like I used to feel that the music business was uh, competitive. It's really not competitive anymore. It's just crowded, you know, because every there's home studios everywhere, and everybody, the Internet, everybody can put something out, and it doesn't matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent, you know? So you have to weed through a lot of stuff to find anything, you know? So. Yeah. That's there an interesting take. Stuff out there. We, just, we just don't. We just don't know about. It. I would hope that there is. Right on. Right on. Now, speaking with you, you know about the newest album, "Damned If You Do." I, I can sense that not only do you have your guitarist hat on, you know, from the pride that you take from this new album, but also you've been involved with production 
quite a bit over the years. Like you really kind of stepped into the studio and I know you got a, a handle on the business side of the music industry, the production side of the Absolutely. music industry. Yeah. How valuable. Production definitely. Production definitely. I make the records now. And that's kind of one of the reasons when I look back at when I left the band in the eighties, right. um, I left the band in, in, for the intent of learning how to make records. And that's, I think that was, even though that was really tough to do at the time and tough on the band. And I know I let them down at the time, but that was the only way, for some reason, I guess I knew that that was going to be the only way I could uh, stay in the business. And, you know, that allows me to do it now. I, I, I make my own records, and we make the Metal Church records ourselves now, and I produce and engineer them, and, you know, it's we do it at my place. So that's uh, that's definitely a really nice thing and was an attractive thing for Mike to come back is that we are in complete control of making the records. That's awesome. Now, how much more gratifying is it for you, you know, to be – producing those records at the same time oh it's great and especially when people like it yeah you know? right and you go, yeah, I, I, I built that i did that you yeah. know it's, it's a really nice feeling it is and yeah. just 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 to be able to be in control of your art you know and what you're doing is, is it, nothing beats it. right on you're, you're, no, it's, yeah. it's funny that we have a chance to talk right now you know and again everybody we are here with kurt vanderhoof metal church <laughs> Um, you know, I tried to catch up with you, not this past summer, but the summer before at Chicago Open Air, and and I missed oh, out on that. But what a lineup. I mean, there you are. You guys are out there. Anthrax is there. Megadeth is there. Slayer is there. It was like you had three of the quote-unquote big four, you know, although you're certainly a part of that family because, you know, I know you've got a, <laughs> right? And, and I know you've got a rich history with all those guys. But yeah. the, as far as touring... Uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to touch on how you are going to be supporting Damned If You Do, and, you know, coming up in 2019. I guess the biggest one, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Mega Cruise, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's going to be awesome. That'll be uh, October of 2019, I think. Yeah, October. Man, I wish um, we could fast yeah, we're forward. Going out, we're going to be going out, it looks like at some point. Well, we're setting up all our touring now. We're going to be doing a, a state. US, U.S. run for about a month or so, um, probably in early in the spring. Okay. And uh, maybe earlier, but we're setting all that up right now. A couple of trips to Europe, doing festivals. We're doing heavy Montreal in uh, in Montreal uh, this July. Okay. And uh, yeah, doing some festivals like doing Bloodstock in the UK and things like that. But we're setting all that stuff up right now, so we'll be out on the road definitely. All right. Now, are you going to be doing any of the Danny Wimmer presents uh, festivals? Is that in the works at all? You what, have you thought about that? Festivals are those. I, I know that name, but I'm not sure if familiar. Well, with Chicago festivals. Open Air is one of them. Uh, you know, I know you got the what Rocklahoma out there, Louder Than Life, oh. uh, Aftershock. Maybe I have not heard any specifics on those. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, that'd be great. I hope so. I mean, I, I like I like the fact that there's starting to be some festivals in America because over in Europe they're such a huge deal and they're just awesome. You know, there's so many bands and these things are just great big events. You know, we should have a lot more of that here. But I think maybe because geographically America's so big, it's probably not quite as easy. You know, it's a different world. It's definitely a different world over there. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to touch on before I let you go, because I know your time is sensitive and you have other things to do, but again, Kurt, thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much for your not time. My choice, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if, if I didn't take five takes to introduce you properly, you know, we'd have already had that's, this baby wrapped up. Cool, you know? But uh, I want to talk official music videos, because obviously right. you've got a couple out there in support of this new album that just came out a few days ago. And uh, yeah, it was wild to me, because here I am looking at Mike. And I don't know why I necessarily thought this, but I got this, you know, Bruce Dickinson kind of take. It's like, oh, my God, look at this dude who's all clean cut. You know, back in the day, you know, he's got the long hair and everything. Bruce Dickinson, the long hair. Now he's all corporate America, clean cut, flying me his own Iron Maiden 747 jet. And it looks like Mike could be doing the same thing because I'm thinking, right, oh, right. you know, by the numbers, that music video. Oh, my God. I was bagging up. I was okay. dying. <laughs> I'm like, how many middle-aged guys out there don't want to be like that character that Mike Howe is, is portraying, you know? It's like, you're right, getting ready, right. you go off to work, the wife is, you know, heading off to work, and it's like, all right, I'm turning around, I'm going back to the house, we're going to rock out, you know, it's going to be amazing. So, I mean, how much, how much fun is it for you to still be doing official music videos like this? Well, the making of the video is pretty tedious sometimes yeah. especially you know because for our part you know it's a whole other production aspect and a whole other production crew and it's something that 
I, I don't really understand. So it's it's a lot of it's, it's it's a good couple of days making one of those, and a lot of just you know you get you know a couple minutes here, a couple minutes here, a couple minutes here. But it's it's really fun again just to think of the fact that we're still doing this, right? You know, yeah. I mean, at our age, we still get to do this. You know, that's that's pretty amazing. That's a real blessing, and, and it's not lost on me. It's not lost. Well, it's not lost on us at all. Right. But it's it's definitely not lost on me. You know that we it's it's definitely a blessing and being very grateful for that. So it's a lot of fun. You know, it's an awful lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Right, right. Now, you know, given the fact that Metal Church, like you said, has been around for. 30 plus years now, I can't believe it. I mean, I'm not trying to make you feel old. It makes me feel old. I don't want to feel old. You I know? know? I don't but, feel old. Right? You know? But uh, it feels old, but I don't feel old. <laughs> so, the days of music television. Obviously, you were on MTV, Headbangers Ball, you know, the glory days of all that. Do you miss it? Do I miss it being on MTV? No. No? No, not really. I don't. The glory days, that was fun. But there's another side to what was going on then, and that was like all the stuff that, well, Mike, why Mike didn't stay in the band and why the band broke up. So during all that time when it was going on, there was all that stuff behind the scenes that was going on with the band and why it broke up. So in my perspective, it was kind of like, that's all fine and dandy on the surface, you know. But behind the scenes, it was kind of the reality of how the business was working and the reality of what was going on. So there's a little mixed bag that are going on right now, to me, is the glory days for this. Okay. No, that's awesome. To- that's awesome. But, I mean, with what you just touched on, and I'm not trying to sensationalize anything that's not my style, but right, right, right. would you say that MTV had something to do with Metal Church breaking up at that point in time? No. That period of time when MTV was doing the Headbangers Ball and all that kind of stuff, that was that was fine and it was great. But what was going on with the band that period of time behind the scenes? Oh, okay. Not, not because of MTV, but that time frame okay. that we were on. It was like the band was getting bigger, and as we were getting bigger, the reality of how the business worked was going on. Oh, okay. All and right. then that started ripping at the band and kind of making you go, Hey, wait a minute, you know. Right, so it just kind of perpetuated everything from a business standpoint. Everything's getting larger than life because you've got this new media outlet to get your music out there and you're more visible in a lot of ways. because Exactly, people... the band's big and everything's going great. Why am I dirt broke? That's, yeah. The, yeah, that's pretty wild. Now, you know, I've checked out some of your other interviews because I hate to overlap <laughs> with material, but, you know, the fact that you touched on the fact that, you know, you go broke, you know, and I mean, making money nowadays in the music industry isn't what it once was in terms of being able to, you know, make revenues off your music sales. That right. doesn't really exist anymore. It's almost ex- exclusively in touring and in merch, yeah? It is, yeah, uh, but at the same time, again, we're in a real unique position. Well, I don't know, excuse me, I have to qualify that. I don't think it's necessarily unique. But the fact that we make our own records, we don't have to pay studio time. Right on. So what money we do make, we get to, we get to, the band gets it. You know, rather than paying all these, like, $75,000 to make an album and just in studio time, and then you have your producer, and he takes a chunk first before you ever get it. We're down at the bottom of the, of the pay food chain, you know, and all this money, and one of the things that I really need to learn the word needed to learn the definition of back in the day was recoupment and how the business worked. They would, they would give you money and pay for everything, but you really didn't realize that you owed all that money. So when the album was selling and all this kind of stuff, you weren't getting any money for it because it was paying off this debt. So that whole machine corporate thing. So now the fact that we can make the records with, with, you know, we don't really pay studio. I own it, so it's my place. Right. Um, so, so there isn't big money anymore, but and the big sales aren't there, but you don't need to sell as many records as you did to make the same amount of money. Right on, right on. Yeah, so, so, yeah but there definitely is more money in touring and the merchandise, absolutely. And the, you know, so and once, nowadays you once got... streaming companies, once, oh, I'm sorry, once streaming companies start paying us, for you know that's a huge issue for me a big thorn in my side is that you know the spotify's and all these streaming companies the product that they're selling they don't pay for right right you know, that's, and that's really 
a lot of us. A well, it's lot criminal. Of it's criminal. It, it's absolutely criminal. But fortunately, it looks like there's some legislation that is going to start, that is starting to get a handle on that. Because, you know, once that changes, you know, once the streaming companies, because the whole idea of streaming is fine. Right. But these companies have to pay for the product that they're selling, and they don't. It's just pennies on the penny. Right on. Yeah. Right on. But now you've got your creative freedom, like you said. You've got your production freedom. you got a good relationship with Rat Pack Records. You know? yeah. And speaking of relationships, and then I'll let you go, and I just want to, you know, give Metal Church fans out there, you know, some, some confidence moving forward, you know, to... To take away any kind of anxiety they might have over the current lineup staying together, because obviously there's been a you know some turnover over the years. But this current lineup you got, you know, with Mike being back, you know, and and and, and set and oh man, uh, how, how, how's everybody gelling? How much are you enjoying oh, the brotherhood that you have going on right now? Oh, it's great. It's now it's been it's been great. For a while, ever since Mike came back, it's been really good because he gave us a new injection of life. It's, yeah. The fans got excited, and it was it gave it a little more. It felt a little more legitimate, you know, okay. because here's you know we're bringing somebody back, and again because he is in great shape and singing better than ever, and he's a such a good guy, and we're great friends, so we get along incredibly well. A lot of it is because we're grown ups, so to speak. And we know how to work with each other rather than back when we were kids and egos and stuff. All that stuff is kind of out the window now. So, you know, and I can see this lineup lasting a long time. And I think the band will continue as long as the band will continue as long as people want to still want to listen to our records and still want to come to the show. So in one capacity or another, I think the band will continue. Yeah. Well, I certainly hope so. And everybody, again, you know, like Kurt just said, got to keep listening to their music. Go check out Damned If You Do. Honest to God, it kicks ass. And, you know, not, not only with the album, but the official music videos, by the numbers, Damned If You Do, official music yeah. video. Go check those out. Do you have any other official music videos that you're going to be doing for this new album? Not right now. Nothing okay. planned, but we might be doing some live stuff once we hit the road. Very cool. Very cool. So moving into 2019, obviously we touched on the Mega Cruise and your European touring and whatnot. Is there anything specific that people should be on the watch out for? Um, I mean, other than that, not really. I mean, there's uh, just yeah, just the, the gigs and all that stuff that is coming up. That's what's on the that's what we're putting on the books right now. So. All right, all right. And the best um, and the best way for everyone to you know stay up to date on what Myrtle Church has going on. Go RatPackRecords.com. Metal Church Official, MetalChurchOfficial dot com. It'll send you right over there. So the okay. the usual internet ways of going right there. You active on social media? Do you doing, doing any Twitter? Are you getting into twi Twitter wars with anybody? I, I don't do social media. There you go. Good man. So, I, I there's a there's a Facebook page, but that's run by the record company. All right. You know, I guess it's necessary, but. I, I don't have time to see what my friends had for dinner. Yeah, right on, man. I don't care, you, man. You, I don't care. You live longer, too. You know? I, I'm sure I will. And I won't get into any keyboard wars. So, yeah. yeah. Right? All There's right. There's nothing worse than these people with keyboard courage that are anonymous. It's like, you know, great. Isn't that see something, it? how people are able yeah. to flex and bow up these days, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. You know, so, it reminds, yeah. I don't have time for that. You know, no. back in the day, it was beer muscles, you know? It's That's like. Right. They got social media muscles. I don't even know. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't. I don't think too many people are going to be getting up in your face, though. No. Yeah. No. All right. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for your time. And again, everybody, we are here with Metal Churches. Kurt Vanderhoof, and they got their brand new album, "Damned If You Do." Make sure you go check it out. I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Music Television. We're out.